Hi, today we're going to talk about how to handle and overcome rejection in your life coaching business. My name is Krista Kathleen and I'm a life coach and spiritual business mentor, and I help life coaches to get certified and earn their ICF credentials. And in today's video, we're going to learn how to normalize rejection and examples of famous people who've been rejected. Why does rejection feel so bad? Areas where I've experienced rejection in my own coaching biz, how to self soothe when you experience rejection, the success that can follow from being rejected and some journal prompts as well. Okay. So the first thing that I want to share with you is rejection is normal. Everybody on this planet experiences and goes through it and it is a part of the success formula when running a life coaching business. It isn't something that we should be afraid of. Rejection is not the enemy here and we don't have to let it to define us. We don't have to give all our power away to rejection. It's just one small part of the experience in the bigger picture of what we're doing here. I don't know about you, but I always like to hear examples of other people who've gone through what I'm going through and were able to successfully overcome it. So I want to share with you some really famous people in our history that experienced really intense forms of rejection and were able to get through it and create massive amounts of success. And I know that you know all these people. So the first example is Walt Disney, who obviously discovered and created the whole Disney empire. And he was fired from the Kansas City Star in 1919 because his editor said he lacked imagination and had no good ideas. Oprah Winfrey was an evening news reporter and apparently got fired because she couldn't sever her emotions from her stories. J.K. Rowling, who's the author of the Harry Potter series, got fired when working at the London office of Amnesty International because she would write stories on her work computer all day long. Lady Gaga, the famous pop singer, when she was finally signed onto a major record label, Lady Gaga was dropped only after three months of being signed. Marilyn Monroe, the famous actress, when she was first trying to start her career, modeling agencies told her that she should consider becoming a secretary instead. And Michael Jordan, one of the most well-known basketball players, was cut from his high school basketball team. And last but not least, Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, was rejected from his own company. So as you can see, these incredible and brilliant entrepreneurs had to go through this intense rejection in order to get to where they are today. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is why does rejection feel so bad, right? When we experience rejection, it hurts, it stings. It feels like physical pain inside of our body. Sometimes it feels like we may be actually dying. It can make us start to question ourselves and say, I'm not good enough, or maybe I'm not meant to be a successful coach or have a successful business. And sometimes it can even go on to make us feel depressed or suicidal. Um, I remember when I went through some of the worst pain of my life of getting fired from my nursing job and getting divorced. And I just felt like the world and the universe was out to get me. And I was stuck in that victim mindset for so long. So whether the rejection we experience is big or small, one thing will remain constant is that it's always going to hurt at the end of the day. And it usually hurts way more than what we expect to. So the answer is, is that our brains are wired to work in this way. So when scientists worked with volunteers, and put these people on MRI machines and ask them to think about areas of where they've been rejected in their life, they were amazed to find that the parts of the brain that were activated were the same parts of the brain that experience physical pain. So what that means is when we experience rejection, it is literally our brain telling us that we are in physical pain and it's why it hurts so much. But why is our brain wired this way? Well, evolutionary psychologists believe that it all started out back in the caveman days when we were living in tribes and communities of people. Evolutionary psychologists believe that this all started back in the day when we are hunters and gatherers and lived in tribes. Since we could not survive alone at this time, being left out of the group literally was a death sentence. 
And as a result, we developed an early mechanism inside of our brain that warned us of when we got kicked outside of our tribe or being rejected, that that was basically meaning we were going to die. So people who experienced rejection were more likely to change their behavior, resulting in being able to save their life. And then this got passed down along in our genes to where we are today. But today, the most dangerous part of rejection is the way that we respond to it. We call ourselves names, we develop eating disorders, sometimes we physically hurt ourselves, and we just can bully ourselves and have so much negative self-talk. So when our self-esteem is hurting the most, we go and damage it even further. So now I wanna share with you some areas where I've personally experienced rejection in my coaching business as a way to show you that you're not alone and this happens to so many different coaches and business owners out there. I've had potential clients say yes on a discovery call and then when I send them the contract and their invoice, I never hear from them again. I've had paying clients who've just stopped showing up for their sessions. I've had people quit my membership only after one month of being in the membership and I felt like there was so much more value that they could see and experience but that they didn't want to. I got fired by my last nursing career, which forced me into early retirement as a nurse, which is one of the best things that could have happened to me, but was devastating at the time. Uh, when I was first starting out as a coach, my family and friends thought I was absolutely crazy and told me that I was not going to succeed in what I was doing. Um, I've had lots of people leave very mean and hurtful comments to my videos on my YouTube channel. Uh, when I was first applying for my PCC credential when the, with the International Coaching Federation, I actually did not pass on my first time. And every day I have people who unsubscribe from my email list. So now I wanna share with you how to create a plan around self-soothing when situations like this happen, because the situations I just read off to you most likely will probably happen to you at some point as well. And I want you to be ready and prepared for them and to know how to take care of yourself and not to induce further self-harm when you go through this. So these are all real things that I've done after I felt rejection when running my business. So I'll go for a hike and I love to listen to the episodes on the NPR podcast, How I Built This, so I can listen to examples of other very successful entrepreneurs and business owners and how they have gone through their biggest failures in life. Um, I love talking to my coach and my therapist and my coaching community to have that support that I can lean on. I love to binge watch Netflix shows and eat my vegan coconut ice cream. Um, taking a power nap usually helps everything feel so much better after waking up. A lot of times I'll ask my partner for a hug or just cuddle with them for a little bit to get that oxytocin flowing again. I'll go on YouTube and I'll listen to different inner child meditations and talk to my inner child that's feeling the most heard of all. And I'll reread past testimonials from clients. So when I do all these things, it allows me to honor how I'm feeling and to take care of myself without letting myself spiral and tell myself untrue stories that I'm not a good coach or I'm not meant to have a successful coaching business or make the money I want because that's not gonna be helpful. That's not gonna get me to where I need to be. And so I don't want you to do that to yourself either. So from that list that I just read, go ahead and pick one thing that maybe you wanna try the next time you experience rejection or come up with your own plans so you can be ready to navigate through this when it happens. And the last thing I wanna share with you today is all of the success and the good that has come from me going through this rejection. I've become mentally stronger and I feel so much more confident that when I do experience more rejection in the future, that I have the tools and the capabilities to help me to navigate and get through it. When I feel rejection, it is fuel for my passion and motivation to take action and to also prove others wrong. Rejection has also allowed me to quickly let go of people in situations that are no longer serving me. Getting fired for the first time in my life would allow me to retire as a nurse at 30 years old. And if that hadn't happened, I might still be an unhappy and miserable nurse to this day and not have started my coaching business because I was too scared to quit. 
And now I'm working towards creating my first six figure year in my coaching business, which I'm so excited about. And I've truly been able to create the ultimate definition of flexibility and freedom for myself and my life. I'm able to take two hour naps in the middle of the day. I get to work from home. I get to work with incredible coaching clients all over the world. I've started my first coach training program last year. If my son gets sick, I can take him to the doctor in the middle of the day and I don't have to use PTO. I get to take month long vacations and give myself pay raises whenever I want to. And the most important part is that I've been able to develop an empowered relationship with rejection. I now see it as a good sign and that I'm on the right path to success. So now I want to share some journal prompts with you that you can use the next time that you're experiencing rejection to help you to have a new empowered relationship with it as well. So number one, what else could be true about this rejection? Number two, what does this rejection mean about the other person? Number three, how can the rejection be used for your greater good? Number four, what did the rejection teach you about yourself and your situation? And number five, how will you apply this moving forward in your life? Okay, so my takeaway message for you today is please, please, please don't let the fear of rejection get in the way of you pursuing your coaching business. You have too many skills. You have too many great ideas and skills to offer the world and help this world to become a better place. The world needs you to fulfill your purpose and now you have the tools to get through rejection when it happens. So I am so grateful for you watching this video today. So make sure that you like it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that way you can be notified of when I release new videos each week. And if you enjoyed my vibe and energy and this message, I would love to keep working with you. So below the video, I have lots of different links of how we can keep working together. I have an amazing monthly membership called the Find Your First Paying Client Membership. And this is where I'll teach you how to get your coaching business up and running so you can start making money as a life coach. And then we also have a coach training program called the Born to Coach Training Academy. The second cohort is starting this October. We have a couple of spots left. And if you're ready to become a certified professional coach and earn your ICF credentials, then you're not gonna wanna miss out on this training. So just go ahead and check out the links below the video to join. And I look forward to meeting you. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.